Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from ExitAutomation.com and welcome to our test project course. And in this video, we will be talking about managing and working with mobile element locators. Alright, so let's get started. Element locators. Element locators in test projects are very intuitive and it's easily maintainable and reusable. Elements can be managed in one single place within test project itself. So we have an option where you can also drill down and you can manage all the elements of a particular application within test project. And note that we will be also talking about reusing the element locators in other tests of the same application later in this course. But as of now, just be informed that there is also one of the cool features in test project where you can use an UI element locator of one application within another application and then you can also reuse the element locators. That's easy as well. So let's quickly start working with the element locators and understand how things work. So for that I'm gonna flip to test project and also we'll be creating a scenario to replicate how we can manage the element. Let's get started. Alright, so this is my test project portal. I have already signed into my portal right now and I'm going to connect the Xiaomi device into my test agent and I will show you how the element connectivity is going to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same device which I've been using in two videos so far and now I will show you that if I connect the Xiaomi device that I have in my computer via USB you can see that instantly the test project will have this device connected message. It shows that the Xiaomi device has been connected. So this is the way that it tells you that once there is any connectivity, the device has been connected and you can manage it from your agent as well. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to work with the locators. But for that, I'm going to make use of another device this time. Actually not the physical device because we have been using the physical device for past two videos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make use of a simulator this time. So I'm going to open the simulator. So you can see that this is the new version of operating system and we're going to use this guy this time. So now if I go to my agent, you can see that we will be having two devices. One is the simulator and another one is going to be the real device. So if I open this and if I go to the devices this time, you can see that I will have the Xiaomi device, but the Simulator is currently missing. The reason is because there is a toggle which says show simulator which is currently in off state. So if I turn this guy on, you can see that I will have my simulator as well. So there is nothing called authorization for the simulator because simulator is just something that is running in your local machine. So you don't really have to authorize that. And you can see that the OS version is 25 as I said before. And this is a simulator, so that's why you don't really have to care about the operating system types here. And you can also view the device as you did before with the real device. So everything works pretty much like how you did with the real device. And just that this is a simulator, so the connectivity will be like this, right? So this is coming from my simulator, which is nothing but this one, right? So now if I just do a click here, you can see it happens in the simulator as well right so I'm just gonna close this guy and I'm gonna go all the way back to the home and then to the project and now I'm gonna run the same YouTube application that we executed in our previous video by opening this particular test and then I'm gonna run this particular test and we'll see how the test is gonna run in the simulator instead of the real device so I'm just gonna do a start recording and you can see that by default it is going to take the Xiaomi device for me because while we were running this particular test we were actually running on the Xiaomi device so it knows that this particular test has to run on the Xiaomi device at any cost. But what if I want to run this particular test on the simulator instead of running in this particular device. So for that I'm just going to stop this particular uh, recording which is currently running here. So just I'm going to hit the save and exit. And then I'm going to disconnect my real device from here right now. So if I just disconnect this, you can see that it shows that the device got disconnected, the Xiaomi device, right? And now if I go to the YouTube app demo once again, and now if I try to hit this start recording, you can see that 
it will ask that the default device is not available please select a different device so this guy this particular test knows that there was a default device which is a Xiaomi device for this particular test but for some reason the particular device doesn't exist so do you want to run this particular test on a different device this time which is nothing but the emulator that we have this one so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this simulator and then I'm just going to run this you can also make this uh, simulator as a default but I'm just going to leave this for now and then I'm going to select the simulator which is nothing but this one so now you can see that this is connecting to the simulator alright so as you can see that it is currently preparing the YouTube but for some reason it seems like the YouTube has got the older version for uh, this particular emulator that we have but I guess it's fine but we will have some kind of problem so every time it opens the YouTube it is going to have the uh, message saying that the YouTube uh, is like kind of older version so if we try to run this test you will have this particular problem so if I try to run this you'll understand what I'm trying to say so once I hit this run button you can see that it is opening the YouTube app but you will have this particular message saying a new version of YouTube is currently available so this particular step was something which we have not recorded so I'm just gonna stop the test and I'm gonna record this particular uh, option that we have over here so that we will have this particular error gone as well so I'm just gonna click this later button and you can see that this particular uh, element has been recorded and I can just move this particular step all the way after the reset is happening so that I don't really have the particular message and then I can start searching so this is another way that you can manage the element basically so if you want to record something and if you want to move the particular step we can just drag and drop the particular step over here so that that particular element can be recognized as well and now if I try to run this maybe we will have an error so let's try to run this and see what's really gonna happen so as you can see it has opened the app and it should click the later button it did and now it should search so let's see what's really happening so for some reason I could see that the search button is not being clicked or something and let's go to the search option that we have and there is a find so that you can try to find the particular uh, search button is actually identifiable or not so I'm just gonna click this find button and you can see that the element locator has no matching element so this is happening because it makes sense the Android version 4.4 that we used the Xiaomi device is an older version of operating system and it has an older version of YouTube application running but this one is Android 26 and it has to have for sure the new version of YouTube and this particular search that we have is not going to be recognized for some reason so you can see that it is not identifying and the element locator has no match so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go all the way here and then I'm going to use the shortcut double shift so that it can find the particular element and now if I go to the attribute you can see that it has a unique element that's really really cool so this was something which was not there before but for some reason for this particular new Android app it has the unique element so I'm just going to choose this guy and then I'm just going to copy this I'm going to edit the element and then I'm gonna paste this particular element which is nothing but the unique element and this is kind of very very unique as well that's really cool I guess this is going to be a different element this time it's a resource ID it's not an X path so let's see we have a ID here then I'm gonna paste this particular value so it's not X path anymore it's an ID and then if I try to find this you can see that this time it is highlighting this particular element so you can change the element locator on the fly and you can change the element locator type on the fly so it was X path before and we have selected the ID and the ID is nothing but this value and if you just click this find button you can see that it is currently highlighting and one element is being matching that's really cool and now I can just save this particular option I can try to run the same test again so that we can see that how it works so I'm just going to run this test let's see what's gonna happen so it's again closing the YouTube app and it is opening it again and you can see that the same thing is actually happening 
in my simulator as well side by side so it has clicked that later button and now there is one more problem I guess it is not clicking the first element which is nothing but the execute automation uh, selenium C sharp this element was not was clicking in our earlier test but for some reason this is not working as well so I'm just going to stop this test and then I'll try to identify this element so you can see that it is much easy to manage the element locators in test project because you can straight away see what is the failure happening and also you can rectify the problem by just clicking this particular uh, step that is causing the problem and you can hit this find and you can see that it shows that the element locator is not matching and then you can edit the element and you can verify if something is matching or not so I can just go over here again double shift so it will tell you what is the attribute of it so you can see that it has once again a unique ID that's really cool so these were something not available in the older version of YouTube and Google has managed to add some very into video IDs so I'm just gonna use that hit the find again so it is finding it I think this is for all the IDs but we need exactly this particular ID so I'm gonna go all the way to this attribute once again let's see what is this particular value so it is actually choosing the first value from here so maybe I can evaluate okay so you can see everything I can do on the fly the evaluation so maybe we need to copy this one because if I use ID it is going to choose all the values as you can see it's going to choose all the value but I need the first one as of now it is not very generic though but uh, we will deal about the generic way or dynamic way of handling the IDs later in this course but as of now just bear with me this is how you can modify the element you can save it and now what you can do is you can run the test right from here instead of running from the first which is kind of pain every time you don't really have to reboot the app and do all those search thing now I can run right from here so run from here if you click this option you can see that it is going to click the particular option that's really cool and we were clicking some other options here like subscribers playlist and all those stuffs let's see what's happening if I just stop this test you can see that we have an error here saying selenium automation in C sharp doesn't exist so I guess this particular element also has been changed so if I hit find you can see the element locator is not matching so again I'm just going to do a double shift here so you can see there is a title and this is the X path so I'm just going to copy this to clipboard I'm gonna paste it all right it is matching so I'm just gonna save this guy and then you can see that it there is an option called tap trending so I guess this tap trendings and all those stuff is not available with a newer version of YouTube for some reason hmm I don't see those options here like trendings and you can also click the widgets and all those stuff so I guess these options are not something which is specific to this particular YouTube app so how to handle this kind of situation so there is a test which is actually could able to identify those elements which was working fine those steps are kind of necessary but this particular step is kind of not necessary or maybe it's not required for this version of YouTube so what you should do is you don't really have to run all this particular option or maybe I need to disable all this particular option so how do I just go to all these options and disable this there is a very very simple option here so all you can do is you can select this multiple select option here maybe you can save the changes and once you click that you can see you can select these particular options here so that you can disable them so you can see there is an option called disable steps you can select that and test project is much intelligent enough to disable all of these steps for you so that you don't really have to run them again and again so now if I try to run this whole test you can see that it is going to run the test like opening the application searching it and then clicking the first element but it won't execute the other options like clicking the trending and all those stuffs. so this is how you can manage the element and you can work with different kinds of locators and then you can also find the element on the fly and perform an operation so these things are much simpler in test project to deal with 
But we'll be talking about working with locators, different kinds of locators and managing the element in much greater detail in upcoming sections of this course because this section is a basic section and we're just introducing the whole idea of mobile automation. In our upcoming videos, we'll be talking even further detail on how to manage these elements and how you can reuse the elements and how you can uniquely identify an element in much simpler fashion. So that's it guys. Once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.